Have you ever wanted to see all your ships in one place? Analyze an unreleased concept ship or organize your fleet? Hello everyone, I'm Lennox Leth. Today, I will show you how to visualize your fleet using Starship 42's Fleet View by Lundfasai. Start by navigating to Fleet View using the web address provided in the description below. When you arrive at the tool, you will first be on the selection screen where you can provide a list of ships you would like to visualize. This screen contains a list of every ship officially announced organized by manufacturer. Taking a look at the row for an individual ship, we can see information about that ship which can aid players who are exploring different options for their fleet. On the left side of each ship's row, you will notice an icon that represents the ship's primary role. There are eight different icons, including a sword for combat, box for transport, planet for exploration, trophy for competition, wheel for ground, factory for industrial, wrench for support, and numerous outward-facing arrows for multi-purpose ships. Hovering over these icons will highlight all other ships that share the same role. Next, you will be able to see the flyable status of the ship. This is represented either by white text accompanied by a wing icon for ships currently flyable in-game, or with ambered colored text for ships that are currently unreleased. Blue text is used for ships that have been scheduled for development as a part of the Squadron 42 single-player game. When you hover over a ship's row, you will see two different indicators about the size of the ship. First is the ship's size classification, which can be either vehicle, snub, small, medium, large, or capital. The second value you will see is the ship's length in meters. This is accompanied by a green bar that allows you to quickly visualize the length of the ship compared to nearby rows. When it comes to selecting the list of ships you would like to visualize, you have a few options. First, you can manually select each ship you would like to visualize from the list of ships we just reviewed in the center of the screen. Clicking anywhere on a ship's row will add one copy of that ship to the list of ships you would like to see displayed. Selecting the minus button will remove that ship from the list. In addition to manually selecting individual rows, you can also add a group of ships at once. This can be done by selecting any manufacturer's logo or by clicking the roll icon on any ship. Doing so will add one copy of each ship matching the selected group. If you would like to undo this action, you can control click on the manufacturer or roll icon to remove one of each ship from the selected group. Alternatively, you can use the Choose File button to upload a file that contains a list of the ships you'd like to visualize. These files can be exported from various fleet management tools such as Hangar Explorer, CCU Game, or even this Fleet View tool itself. We will go over how to export your fleet to a file later in this video. If you are currently in the process of building a fleet and aren't yet using the CCU Game to easily get big discounts on your ship, I'd highly recommend you check out my video in the top right corner. Lastly, you can select recently displayed or previously saved fleet configurations using the red buttons located under the gray configuration pane. If this is your first time using Fleet View, it's likely you will not have any of these options available. We will also be reviewing how to populate this section with saved fleet configurations later in this video. If at any point you are unhappy with your current selections, you can quickly reset the tool using the clear all button located directly below the upload file button. The Fleet View tool also supports merging multiple selections from any of the previously mentioned input methods. To enable this feature, tick the Append checkbox located above the Start button. This option can be helpful when trying to visualize what ship an organization might have access to across its many members, or for an individual to see all of the ships they have across multiple accounts. Finally, before pressing the Start button, you must indicate which textures you would like to use when visualizing your fleet. The options include Chrome, which will show your fleet as though they were gold-plated. This is similar to the ship models you can see in Loreville at the New Deal Ship Shop. White Box, which will show your ships without any textures. This may allow for better performance on some machines with limited graphics resources. And Colorized, to show your ships as they will appear in-game with their default liveries. Once you have finished making your ship selections and have indicated your desired textures, you can hit the Start button to begin loading the 3D models. 
do be aware that Fleet View is a 3D tool. This means you must have a device capable of graphically rendering the 3D models. Devices such as phones, tablets, and even some laptops may not be able to run the tool smoothly or possibly at all. On devices with limited resources, the Fleet View tool may be slow or fail to load entirely. If this happens, try refreshing the tool, removing some of your selections, or lowering the visualization quality to white box before trying again. If this doesn't resolve the issue, try running the tool on a different device, such as the computer you use to play Star Citizen. Once the models have finished loading, you'll be brought to the Fleet View screen, where you will be able to see each one of the ships that you had previously selected for display. Fleet View gives you complete control over viewing your fleet in three-dimensional space. For starters, you can rotate the camera by holding the left click button and dragging the mouse to move the camera around a point in the center of the screen. To pan, hold right click and drag the mouse to move the camera up and down or sideways throughout the space. There are two different ways to zoom within the Fleet View tool. First, you can click and hold either the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel and drag the mouse up and down. Alternatively, you can scroll up or down on your scroll wheel to zoom in or out. The P key can be used to toggle between first-person camera mode. This camera mode allows you to use the W, A, S, and D keys to move in directions relative to your mouse cursor, and the R and F keys to move up and down. Fleet View also comes with a few preset camera angles and animations. The Tab key alternates between fixed top-down camera angles, and the Shift key alternates between fixed 45-degree camera angles. Lastly, you can press the spacebar to enable or disable presentation mode, which will play some background music and animate viewing different ships within your currently selected fleet. There are five different layout options for positioning your selected ships. These can be found in the button group located at the top left of the screen. The layout options are Line Layout, also activated by pressing the Z key, displays your ships in a series of lines sorted by smallest in length to greatest. Curve Layout, also activated by pressing the X key, displays ships in a curve or arc sorted from smallest in length to greatest. The size of the arc can be increased or decreased using the plus or minus buttons to the right of the curved layout button. Chaotic Layout, also activated by pressing the C key, drops ships randomly from the sky, allowing them to collide and bounce around the display area. Fleet Layout, also activated by pressing the V key, displays ships in a row along with their name and size labels, ordered from smallest in length to greatest. The number of rows can be increased or decreased using the plus and minus arrows to the right of the button. Custom Layout, also activated by pressing the B key, allows for manual placement of each ship. Holding Alt while left-clicking and dragging on a ship will change its rotation, and holding Control while left-clicking and dragging up or down on a ship will move its position vertically. The Snap to Grid button to the right of the Custom Layout button can be enabled to more easily align ships in your custom layout. When you are finished arranging, ship movement can be disabled by clicking on the lock icon directly below the Snap to Grid button. The top right group of buttons toggles displaying different information about the selected ships. The overlay information available includes Ship Classification, also toggled by pressing the 1 key will show either Vehicle, Snub, Small, Medium, Large, or Capital for each ship. Crew Requirements, also toggled by pressing the 2 key, will show the number of pilots, other mandatory crew members, and optional crew members required to operate each ship. Cargo Capacity, also toggled by pressing the 3 key, will show the storage space available for each ship. Regardless of the overlay selected, a summary for the entire fleet can be viewed in the lower right corner. Before moving on, I wanted to give a quick reminder that if you are finding this video useful and want me to make more videos like this, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. The bottom right group of buttons lets you add labels to various parts of your fleet view arrangement. 
The different types of labels that FleetView supports include ship name labels, toggled on or off by pressing the 4 key, which can be assigned or reassigned by left-clicking and holding on the ship you would like to name. Waypoint labels, toggled on or off by pressing the 5 key, can be set by left-clicking and holding anywhere on the ground. After typing in the desired text, waypoint labels can be moved by dragging them to the new desired location. Do be certain the tip of your cursor is on the actual text, or the tool will interpret the mouse movement as a rotate camera action instead of a move text action. Waypoint labels can be useful for indicating ownership, subdivisions, or the purpose of different groups within your fleet. Fleet name label, toggled on or off by pressing the 6 key, shows a label with larger text intended to be the title of your fleet. Once any of these labels have been set, they can be changed by left-clicking and holding on the text that you would like to update. Labels can be deleted by removing the text in the pop-up overlay before pressing OK. Fleet View is highly customizable when it comes to setting ground, skybox, and background textures. By default, Fleet View comes with over 30 different textures that can be used for the ground, which can be rotated between using the left and right caret keys. In addition to the 30 built-in ground textures, you can also drag and drop a custom square image into Fleet View to be tiled across the ground. This can be useful for recreating a particular environment or for adding branding such as an organization's logo image. Fleet View also has a few customizations which may be especially useful to content creators. The J key can be used to toggle between showing and hiding mirror ground effects and shadows. The H key can be used to toggle between showing and hiding the ground and skybox. And the G key can be used to toggle between showing and hiding a green screen background to allow for chroma key effects. To my knowledge, the one thing you aren't allowed to change once on the Fleet View screen is the ships currently displayed. This is due to there being no built-in way to return to the input screen from the Fleet View screen. However, if you ever want to make a change to which ships are visualized, you can simply refresh the page, press the last Fleet View button, and then make any of your desired updates from there. Once happy with your ship selections, layout, customization, and labels, you can save your fleet in a number of different ways, most of which can be located in the last bottom left group we have yet to discuss. Starting at the top, the first two buttons let you save your fleet as an image. The top button will take a screenshot and download the image directly to your computer, whereas the middle URL button will take a photo and upload it to the Fleet View website. This server-hosted version of the image will then be opened in a new tab where you can grab and share the URL of the file. The bottom Save Fleet button will allow you to name and save your fleet to your browser where it can easily be reloaded for future Fleet View sessions. These saved fleets will be visible in the list of red buttons on the selection screen. To overwrite a previously saved fleet, simply press the Save Fleet button again Double check the name of the save is the same as the fleet you would like to overwrite, and then press OK to confirm the save. The last way to save your fleet is to export it as a Fleet View JSON file. To download this file, you need to select the Download JSON button at the bottom left of the screen. This can be useful if you would like to create a backup of your selections, or if you'd like to easily move your selections to a different computer or browser. This file can be re-uploaded on the selection screen to restore your session. A quick word of warning, if you do use any of these methods to export your fleet out of your browser, be sure to protect the files that are downloaded. If you must share these files, be sure you are doing so in a secure way and only with people you trust. Providing too much information about your account and what purchases are on it can make your account a target for hackers. Clicking on an individual ship in your fleet will bring you to the Ship Details screen, where you can view information about a particular ship. Controlling the camera on the Ship Details screen is very similar to that of the Fleet View screen. To zoom, you can click and hold either the middle mouse button or scroll wheel and drag the mouse up and down. You can also scroll up or down on the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can rotate the camera by holding the left click button 
and dragging the mouse to move the camera around a point in the center of the screen. One difference between the two screens is that, unlike on the Fleet View screen, the pan option is not available. Instead, holding right-click and dragging will also rotate the camera, but will do so at a much slower rate. Also similar to the Fleet View screen, there are a number of different options and overlays. Starting at the top is the Close button, which will return you to the Fleet View screen. Under that is the Toggle Rotation button, which will enable or disable auto-rotating the camera around the ship. The next group of buttons is the various overlays you can toggle for the ship. Starting at the top, you can view the ship's weapons, thrusters, points of interest, propulsion, modular capabilities, and avionics. Do note, each overlay is not yet available for every ship. In the top left, you can find information about the ship, including its name, size, crew requirements, and cargo capacity. Any overlays you have toggled on will also appear directly below the basic ship information. When finished, you can click directly on the ship or use the close button in the top right corner to return back to the fleet view. And that wraps up our tour of fleet view. Are you planning on using fleet view? If so, what is the primary reason for using the tool? Is there a tip or feature about fleet view that I missed that you would like to share? Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like some personalized help, or would want to find a group to play with, we have a new Discord. You can find the information in the description below. If you'd like to hang out live or join me online sometime, find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash You can find a link to the channel and the streaming schedule also in the description below. Until next time, I'll catch you guys in the verse.